I'll finish off the thermo information with uh, a little talk about indicated horsepower, brake horsepower, indicated torque, and calculating mechanical efficiency. So looking at our horsepower first, we have brake horsepower, and that's one we know and love. We can refer to it as BHP for brake horsepower. Um, you're going to measure that in the factory or maybe in a performance shop uh, with, by putting your vehicle on a dyno. And what that will give you is an idea of power loss due to internal friction. All along the drivetrain, or if you've got an engine dyno, then you could have it just in the process of turning the crankshaft and all that. If you're not talking about brake horsepower, you're talking about indicated horsepower, IHP. So that's the power that you generated in the cylinder, the power that you should ideally have available to your vehicle. But because it doesn't include power loss, it's not realistic. <laughs> but it's what we designed for. Um, it can't be me measured, but you can uh, calculate it for if you are given the mean effective pressure, which is something that we can measure. So the mean effective pressure, or the MEP for an abbreviation, is the pressure that's generated in the cylinder when you burn that air field, when you're in that power stroke. And we can spread that pressure out across the face of the cylinder here, and that will create a downward force on the connecting rod and ultimately the crankshaft. Um, we'll measure that, we'll give it to you. The units are gonna be PSI, pounds per square inch. Imagining that the area was in inches squared and the force is in pounds. Okay, we're going to use that mean effective pressure in order to find our indicated I horsepower, IHP. The formula is massive. The numbers are massive. Um, once again, our displacement will be in cubic inches. MEP will be in PSI. RPM will be the engine speed in RPM. And then we just divide it by this derived number 792,000. Let's find some indicated horsepower. I'll just quickly write the formula on the side, our indicated horsepower with a lot of abbreviations, sorry, the MEP, mean effective pressure, times displacement, times the RPMs, and that's divided by 792,000. Okay, now we're ready to rumble. 3.8 is a displacement. It is not in the units I want it to be. If you want to take liters and change it to cubic inches, I believe the multiplier is 61.024. And that's going to give you 232 cubic inches. Everything else looks good to go into the formula, so here we go. IHP, we're gonna get some massive numbers, that's fine. Mean effective pressure, displacement, engine speed, divided by 792,000. Do all that math. Ideally, this engine would provide 257 horsepower at 4,500 RPM. Another example. This one's a bit of a bear because it's expecting us to find our own displacement from all the information I'm highlighting in yellow. Bore and stroke, six cylinders. Okay, we're going to start by finding the swept volume of one cylinder. Pi r squared, remembering that r is the bore divided by 2. So I'm going to take 3.85 divided by 2. And then I need to square whatever I find for that. And then I need to multiply it by the stroke, 3.925. And that should give you about 46 cubic inches. Now, there are six cylinders in this engine. 274 cubic inches is the displacement. 
and now we're ready to go with the indicated horsepower formula. Mean effective pressure, 205. Displacement, 274. Engine speed, 5,000 RPM. Divided by 792,000. And we get 355 horses. Hmm. Seems low. All right, so that's the indicated horsepower. We also have another value, indicated torque. So that's a torque that the cylinder could generate to turn before the frictional forces have ruined everything for us. The formula is very similar to the indicated horsepower formula, but we don't have the RPM here. No engine speed. So remembering back to torque and horsepower a while ago, we said that torque does not depend on engine speed, but horsepower does. So this makes sense. Because we're taking out that RPM, our number has changed on the bottom. Just remember 150, 150.8 or write it down somewhere or use the provided formula sheet. Um, torque you're going to get in foot pounds. We're always working in US customary right now. Displacement will be cubic engines. Inch <laughs> cubic engines. Cubic inches. Ah. There we go, same, same. And then the mean effective pressure will be in pounds per square inches. Okay, a couple of practices on this. We have an engine that is in the wrong unit. The displacement needs to change to CI cubic inches. So we are going to multiply it by 0 0.0 zero sorry six one zero two and that should give me about 140 cubic inches excellent so the formula now for indicated torque we're going to take the mean effective pressure 110 we're going to multiply it by the displacement this question was nice because it didn't give us any red herring RPMs, it just said at idle, and we divide it by the number they gave us, 150.8. Answer will be in foot pounds, 102 foot pounds. Another one, once again, we're going back to having to find the displacement ourselves. Thanks a bunch. So building it all into one displacement pi times r, which is still the bore divided by 2 squared times a stroke times the four cylinders in this engine gives me 123 cubic inches. Okay, indicated torque. Ignore the 5,000, I don't need it for this formula. If I was finding indicated horsepower, I'd bring it in, but I don't for indicated torque. Okay, mean effective pressure multiplied by displacement in cubic inches divided by 150.8 equals 126 foot-pounds. We're going to take our indicated horsepower and figure out mechanical efficiency. So remember volumetric efficiency, which was talking about air, um, the actual amount of air that we could get in to a cylinder versus what we calculated from the displacement, the theoretical amount. Mechanical efficiency similarly compares the full power that you should be able to generate in the cylinder, the indicated horsepower that we just calculated, to the power that the engine dyno is going to calculate, which is the brake horsepower. And what we're observing when we see the mechanical efficiency is what power loss we have due to friction in the system. Like volumetric efficiency, mechanical efficiency will be given as a percent. We're going to take a fraction and multiply it by 100% to create that. Our indicated horsepower, the ideal, goes on the bottom 
the brake horsepower, what actually happens <laughs> goes on the top. If you do that, the brake horsepower will always be a smaller number. So your mechanical efficiency will always be less than 100%. We have a dirty air filter and we have an engine displacement. 116 CI cubic engines. The MEP is 85 PSI and we're getting a brake horsepower. We'll use that in a bit of 41. And we are having an engine speed of 4,000. So first thing, thing we're going to do is find the indicated horsepower. Eighty five for the map. One sixteen for the displacement. Four thousand for the engine speed. Divided by the big number. And it gives me fifty horsepower. Okay, so now we want to find the mechanical efficiency. Brake power power horsepower divided by indicated horsepower. So 41 divided by 50 times 100% equals 82%. That's mechanical efficiency of this setup. Okay, so this is a continuation. We're going to take the same engine, so we know the displacement remains 116 cubic inches and that we know we're doing the same speed which is 4,000 rpm Oop, double down okay but we cleaned the air filter uh, and we did the same tests and the mean effective pressure increased to 105 psi so all our calculations we kind of have to do again we can't kind of shortchange this and then we're going to have brake horsepower 51. All right, so same thing. Start with indicated horsepower. The new MEP times the same displacement and engine speed divided by 79.2 should give you 61.5 horsepower. Next, we find the mechanical efficiency, brake horsepower divided by indicated horsepower times 100%, about 83%. So not a big change, but we did go up 1% for the mechanical efficiency. Last slide. So here we've been given different information. We have the mechanical efficiency already. And we have an indicated horsepower. And they're asking us to find the brake horsepower. Well, let's start with the formula. I'm going to write it all out this time. Just so we know where everything goes. Brake horsepower divided by indicated horsepower times 100%. So once again, I'm going back and forth between brackets or not. Put in the information we have. 85 equals... We don't know the brake horsepower. I'm going to put no, 100 up here because if you're multiplying 100 by a fraction, it can go into the numerator. And my indicated horsepower was 61.5. Go into algebra land. Take 100 and divide it by 61.5. That will give you about 1.63. And that X is still there because we couldn't do anything with it. How do I get x by itself? You need to get rid of the 1.63, so you always divide both sides by whatever's in front of the x to get it by itself and get your answer. These will cancel, and x will be equal to 85 divided by 1.63. That will give you 52.1 as the brake horsepower. So same kind of values, just not solving for the efficiency solving for one of the things that had to go into it. That's thermal, all done.